A real handmade product. Chips, fresh from the press. Contrast this with the industrial production of frozen fries with endless conveyor belts. We want to know how much class production is in mass production and what's the best way to make the crispy golden fries at home. That's why we're going to Koblenz. There's a chip shop here where the chips are made in the traditional way, by hand and fresh. It looks more than tempting, but before we try them, we want to find out how they are made. What ends up on our plates here is hand-pressed, the Belgian and Dutch way. We'll find out what that means from Jonas Bellebaum and Hauke Hebel. Since 2020, their shop has been booming. Jonas tells us the basic secret for perfect fries. The starch content must be right, otherwise the fries will be too brown and hardly crispy. It all comes down to the right potatoes. Ultimately, the potatoes determine how good the fries will be. For home, I'd recommend someone local who you can ask here. This is what I have in mind. Do you have a potato with a starch content that's ideal for fries? Optimum starch content, 13 to 16 percent. That's what the Agria variety has and the two boys get them from Nettetal near the Dutch border. With a bit of luck, you can find this variety online or in the supermarket. Otherwise, look out for the mealy and yellow varieties. Jonas's tip for the taste, mix peeled and unpeeled potatoes. Generally, the completely unpeeled ones are just a tad crispier, and crunch is simply important in frying. And the potato-like, earthy taste comes with the peel, and that's why we just want to have a good mix. That's because the skin keeps more starch inside than a peel chip does. And the more starch you have on the surface, the more crunch you get. This is particularly important in industry. That's why they mainly produce completely peeled, deep-frozen fries. In Frastans, a hundred tons of these are produced every day, for the German market too. Plant manager Norbert Schmidle has been in charge of production for 25 years. Like the chip shop, the Austrian family business also processes mainly the Agria variety. The only difference? They have their own seats for this and give them to regional farmers. This is because larger quantities require consistent quality. Primarily, we process mealy varieties. They are also specially grown for French fry production. Here you can also see a nice size of potato. It should be elongated because you want to have relatively long fries. To ensure quality, the staff take random samples from each batch to check for starch and sugar content. The sugar content should be as low as possible. This is because the sugar crystals quickly form dark crusts during frying. The longer potatoes are stored, the sooner they convert their starch into sugar. So, potatoes should be processed into chips when they're as fresh as possible. If the sugar content is too high, it's better to rinse the fries after cutting. The starch content is determined with the help of an underwater scale. Fourteen point seven per cent, a perfect mean value. Test passed. The brown potatoes are ready for processing. Three hundred tons roll off the belt here every day, a thousand times more than in the chip shop. Peeled there, unpeeled here. In this respect, mass is ahead of class, because peeling potatoes by hand produces a lot of waste. The factory is much more environmentally friendly here. Hot steam and very high pressure give the potatoes a short, sharp shock. This only softens the outer part and the skin can be scrubbed off easily. Here I can check approximately whether the peeling time is set correctly. This here is the so-called peeling edge, which should be a maximum of two millimeters. One to two millimeters. The deeper it's cooked, the more peeling waste there is. Spiro machines brush off the rest of the peel. To make sure they only get the peel, the employees adjust all the processes individually to the respective batch. 
The potato is a living product. Every delivery is different. Here, in the whole plant, from potato import to deep fryer, you can control everything. So far, mass production clearly has its nose in front. Less waste and far less of a burden on the muscles. The fries continue their journey on a slide. This bundles the freshly peeled potatoes and prepares them for cutting. Water and very high pressure drive them through a long pipe into a grid-like cutting template. The individual blades are arranged consecutively. This keeps them sharp for longer and the blade does not clock so easily because the potatoes are forced through there incessantly. The industrial fries here are about 7 millimeters thick. Most customers want thin fries because they don't take long to cook. In the Koblenz chip shop, it's completely different. Here, the two boys follow the Belgian-Dutch tradition and make thick, potatoey chips. Hauke prepares for his daily workout, because here, there's a real potato press. Each potato is pressed through the grid-like cutting knife by hand. What comes out is about 12 millimeters thick, twice as thick as the mass-produced variety. The Dutch prefer to eat them like this. Belgians prefer them even thicker. Not everyone has a press like this at home, that's obvious. Then you have to cut them into even strips at home. And how thick or how thin you cut them, that's all a matter of taste. But in general, you can say that the thinner the potato sticks, the crispier they can be in the end. Because the surface is simply larger. The thicker the potato stick, the more potato-like the result will be afterwards. Either way, the boys love the taste of their wild mix. The way we do it, because we press the whole potato through here, smaller pieces come out somehow, or like this. These are the pieces right at the edge, when they go through the press. Of course, that's always a sign of being handmade. And we don't fish them out either, it all gets fried together. The crooked bits just give the handmade fries that special touch. Unthinkable for industrial production. Here, only long and straight fries make it into the pack. During the long processing procedure, the sticks shrink quite considerably. Any bits or sticks that are too small would become too hard and crunchy during frying. And that would soon lead to complaints from customers. On the top and the second level are the fries. What's further down goes into making hash browns or mashed potatoes. So mass production uses the rejected bits and pieces for a wide variety of potato products. Our sample fries go into the blanching machine. Pre-cooking consolidates the straight structure and even colour, all for the perfect fry. Then you can check whether they've been cooked to the correct degree, if they break and are not yet puree-like. They shouldn't be too soft here. At home, Norbert doesn't recommend pre-cooking them. Too much trouble. After all, they have to be dried before frying. This can be done easier. At the chip shop, the fresh slices go straight into a large, round deep fryer. The important thing is to preheat it well and use oil that's as neutral in taste as possible. Hauke and Jonas use a mixture of rapeseed and sunflower. If you want to make fries and fry them at home, make sure you have a deep fryer with enough power. If you have a fryer that doesn't have that much power, then it's always better to fry small quantities. Pre-fry small quantities and take smaller quantities when you deep fry too, because otherwise the temperature will drop too much. And if the temperature is not high enough, the fries will soak up too much fat. Now let them bubble away for seven minutes and stir them well. But pre-frying and deep-frying? Yes, that's right. The two specialists use a traditional technique from the French fries' supposed country of origin. This is known as double-cooked. It's nice and soft on the inside. And in the second process, it's really just a matter of getting these sticks really nice and crispy, and above all, of getting a nice color on the outside. They're a feast for the eyes, too. 
But where do our chips or fries come from? To this day, the Belgians and the French still argue about which of the two nations get the inventor title. The French claim to have fried potato sticks under the bridges of Paris during the French Revolution. But it looks like the Belgians claim victory with the help of a family document. It says that poor people in the 17th century traditionally fried small fish in hot oil, and in cold winters they used potato strips instead of fish. In the meantime, Hauke's fries have cooled down. Now they go into the oil fryer for another three and a half minutes at about 170 degrees. And the crispy golden yellow sticks are ready. The two boys only add salt to their specialties. They don't use any spice mixtures in their deep fryers. For them, the most important thing is the taste of the potato. That's exactly how the Austrian industrial company sees it. They also use a tasteless vegetable oil. Depending on whether they are later to be oven fries or for the deep fryer, the fries spend different lengths of time sizzling in the hot fat. Here the water is simply evaporated accordingly. We make products here that have 70 to 72 percent water content at the end, as well as products that have only 50 percent water content. These are then the special types for end customers who need quick preparation, or for example in the microwave. The trick of making mass-produced fries taste like homemade is to make them only almost ready. Deep-fried fries stay in the oil for less time. After all, they are then fried a second time at home, just like in the chip shop. Oven fries, like those on the conveyor belts here, spend the longest time in the sizzling oil. Our editor is allowed to taste one and, surprisingly, Tastes like they're done. Without salt, of course. Nevertheless, they already taste really delicious and, above all, fresh. From here, they only go into the blast freezer. Minus 34 degrees. It's freezing cold in here. The golden brown fries go into the packaging without any extras. Neither salt nor spices can be found on the list of ingredients. Then, off they go into the boxes. But where do they go next? They now travel along the family business's pride and joy, their own cable car. A pragmatic solution. The clattering forklifts were too loud for the neighbors. Day and night, it carries the cartons into cold storage. A hundred tons a day. From there, the fries go to customers all over Europe. A portion of fries, I can eat one any time. Norbert is not the only one. Half of all Germans eat them several times a month. In the meantime, daily business is in full swing at our little chip shop in Koblenz. We ask some of the customers. What brings them here? Do the fries taste different here than anywhere else? Whenever I made fries myself, I couldn't get them really crispy. They were always so soft. Well, I don't know how they do it, but it's definitely a success. They definitely taste very good. They don't taste that greasy. My daughter's been here a few times and she raved about how good they are. And so I thought, let's give it a try. And I think they're great. They taste really good. But we want to see for ourselves. Our editor gets to try the handmade fries. How close are mass production and class production? It's really hot inside, so it's really fresh. Oh, look, here's the peel. Mm -hmm. Yes, it tastes a bit more potato-y. Admittedly, mass-produced doesn't quite come up to homemade class, but it's really close. One thing is certain, chip shop or factory, they both get the best out of their potatoes. The trick with frozen fries is to use the right ones. And when making them yourself, cut mealy, elongated potatoes into even strips and double fry them. This is the best way to make one of our favorite potato products, 
French fried potatoes.